I mean, I'd always wanted to be a doctor, really. From the age of 13, I decided I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> when I came to leave school, my, the most inspirational teacher in my school was this wonderful uh, biology teacher. And, you know, biology had always been my big love at school. And anyway, to cut a long story short, I ended up studying zoology, reading zoology at Oxford University and uh, for three years, did an honours degree, which was wonderful. Uh, and then after that, I kind of remembered that I'd always wanted to be a, a medical doctor, so I went to medical school and uh, studied for another five years before qualifying. And I sometimes, you know, over the years, I wondered why I did the zoology degree, but actually it's become more and more clear that that extra scientific knowledge has been very helpful in homeopathy. You know, the, the biology I learned and the, the chemistry, the scientific background, because our knowledge of the remedies is so helped by that. And one of the afflictions that I like treating these days very much is addiction. And I think, you know, addiction is really a modern curse. There's so many people are addicted to one thing or another, but certainly, you know, the serious addictions like drugs, alcohol, smoking, and digital addiction uh, are seriously damaging people's quality of life and having an adverse effect on society. Homeopathy can be miraculous in treating addiction. You know, I think of patients I've seen in recent years. There's a young woman who was a heroin addict. She'd been addicted to heroin for 10 years. <clears throat> she actually turned up three hours late for her appointment because she was stoned. Nonetheless, we actually had a very good interaction and she went very deeply into her state and it was possible for me to clearly see what homeopathic medicine she needed. She had one dose of that medicine, and she came back about a month later and she said, the cravings for heroin have just completely gone. I've given it up, and you know, I just feel so much better. My life is getting back on track. And she was fine for about another six months, and then she came back and she said the cravings started to come back. And um, we talked a bit and I realized she just needed another dose of the same remedy. She had that remedy and the cravings went and they went for good and they never came back. And I know that because I've been treating members of her family for years since then and I, you know, I, I keep hearing that she's absolutely fine. Homeopathy is that powerful. Heroin addiction is something which is very, very difficult to give up. And, but the right remedy because <clears throat> we understood from the conversation where the desire for heroin was coming from. It was coming from deep inner pain at an emotional and physical level. And the homeopathic remedy just pulled that pain out by the roots, destroyed it, cancelled it out. And uh, think of another young man, cocaine addict. <clears throat> his life was in a complete mess. He was sent to me by his boss, who I treated successfully and said, you've got to go and see this guy. And um, so this young man, he's taking cocaine five times a week. He's drinking two bottles of wine a day. He's seeing prostitutes. He's 50,000 pounds in debt. And the feeling I got from him, he was in his early 30s, was that he was right on the precipice. He, he was, and he knew that. He was going downhill fast. And I think he would have been dead in two, three years. Again, we talked and it, you know, where did his desire to be absent from his life come from? Because that's what addiction is. Addiction is about something which prevents, allows you to just not be present. It takes you off somewhere else because the pain of being present is so bad. No one in their right mind would be doing those things that he was doing. Literally. 
it's only because there's so much pain that you want to blank it out. And it turns out that, you know, in his life he <clears throat> felt excluded and that he didn't belong and the children at school called him the hunchback of Notre Dame and that he was ugly and he constantly felt people were talking about him. So life was hell. Life was hell. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we saw what remedy he needed. Actually, the remedy he needed was cocaine and homeopathic potency because people who need that remedy, the remedy picture of cocaine is a very unpleasant feeling of feeling uh, bad about oneself and people are talking about you and saying horrible things. And he had a dose of that remedy once a week <clears throat> and over the course of two, three months he gave up his cocaine, he gave up his alcohol, he gave up the prostitutes and within a year he paid back all his debts. It was miraculous. And, mm -hmm. and deeply inspiring to see that, to see someone's life turned around like that. And I have a number of cases I could relate similar, of different addictions, alcohol, um, can respond equally well. Mm How -hmm. we explain that such tiny globule nothing can do such miraculous mm. cures. Yeah. <clears throat> the thing is, you know, it's probably a, a common state for mankind to think, you know, in the modern age we know everything. <laughs> you know, whatever age it is, it's like, oh, this is the modern age, you know, we've got it sorted out. But if we look back through history, probably it's an unwise conclusion to think that you know our current state of knowledge is as good as it's going to get. And one thing we really don't know the answers to are the fundamental questions still, like what is life? Where does life come from? Where do we come from? What are we here for? And <clears throat> what happens at birth? What happens at the conception of a human being? What happens at death? What is death? We don't know the answers to these questions and we're not going to find the answers to those questions in a test tube because we're talking about the non-material reality of life and essentially, you know, what is it that makes a human being alive and function? It's energy. It's vital energy, what we call life energy, and it's consciousness. <clears throat> it's consciousness and energy that animates a human being. And a physical body will be healthy if that consciousness is balanced and stable and if that energy is strong and vibrant. And when that is the case, the physical body will function normally. When consciousness is disturbed through mental inharmonies, traumas, and when the vital energy is disturbed through, again, mental inharmonies or energetic depletion, traumas, then the subtle animating force of that human being is disturbed. And that's when physical disease happens. That's when vital organs start not working properly. Which is why, although drugs can be life-saving and invaluable in helping people to cope with those diseases, they don't cure it. Because they're working on a physical level, but the cause of the disease is at a subtle level. It's what I call a psychoenergetic complex. It's a psychological disturbance which in turn depletes and distorts and weakens the vital energy, and so the physical body is not working. So, if the cause of disease is subtle, then the cure of the disease is going to have to be subtle too. And so, homeopathic remedy, you, know, you put it in a test tube, you measure what's there, there's no material substance, but it's still real. Vital energy is real. We know 
is a real thing because it has an action on matter. And thought, you can't measure it, you, know, you can't see it, it's invisible, but it's real. Thoughts are real things. Thoughts have power. And so homeopathic medicine, the curious thing is, you know, Einstein, hundred years ago nearly, said, E equals MC squared. What does that mean? It means that matter and energy are interchangeable. It means they're actually made of the same stuff, but at different rates of vibration. But we, you know, we like to think, oh yeah, no, Einstein. But most of us haven't actually caught up with Einstein yet. We don't, haven't actually assimilated that idea that matter and energy is interchangeable. Because when you make a homeopathic remedy, that's what you're doing. It's an Einsteinian process. You're, through this subtle process of dilution with vigorous shaking, you're moving away from the material form of a substance to its energetic blueprint, to its energetic causative principle, the thing that actually creates that material form out of the subtle energetic pattern. So when you make the homeopathic remedy, you get back to that subtle energetic and mental blueprint. So when the person takes that homeopathic remedy, yes, they're taking a substance which relates to that material form, but it's at the level of energy and mind, and that's why it can cure psychological complexes. That's why it can cure energetic disturbances in the body, because that's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you.